Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about Dagger because I think many of you have heard of Dagger before, but only a very few people actually know what that is and why we should use it in our projects. So in this video, I will roughly explain the concept of Dagger. I won't go into too much detail here because I think that is not really necessary to know for your projects. So I will rather explain the, the general purpose of Dagger and its concept. So what the heck is actually Dagger? Dagger is a library for dependency injection and I know what you probably think right now. What the heck has Dagger to do with Gradle dependencies? And I should tell you, I thought the same when I learned about Dagger, but you really have to forget about that concept and Gradle in context of dependency injection because in context of dependency injection, we mean something completely different than Gradle dependencies. So to actually better understand this, we need to separate those two terms, dependency and injection. And let's first look at dependency. So what actually do we mean with dependency here in terms of dependency injection? A dependency is actually in this term just a Kotlin object or a variable. Because whenever we create an object in Kotlin, that means very often that another object is dependent on the object we created. So that's why we call the first object, so the object we created, a dependency because another object is dependent on the object. So let's say we have this class person here that takes a name, an age and the hometown as constructor parameters. That would now mean that all of those parameters are dependencies of that person class because this person class needs those parameters so it is dependent on those parameters and without them this class wouldn't make any sense. And now when we create such a person, an instance of that person class, then we have to provide those dependencies. We have to provide a value for the name, for the age and for the hometown, and then pass them to the constructor of that person class. So that means in this case, the name, the age and the hometown are all its own dependencies for our person class. And for now, you probably always kept those dependencies in the class you created the object in, but this can quickly become very messy and also lead to some problems. So let's actually consider another example here. So take a look at this activity class. That is just a very common thing you need to do in an activity to create a view model for that activity. And let's say that view model needs a view model factor, which, which is pretty common because you need to pass some parameters in the constructor of a view model. Every time you need to do that, you need to create a view model factory. So this view model is dependent on a view model factory. And this view model factory, as you can see, is dependent on the repository. And the repository is dependent on the room database. So all of those objects are dependent on each other. So on the one hand, that now means that we have to keep all of those objects inside of our activity class, which is a lot of boilerplate code. And on the other hand, if we want to change something in this activity class, or let's say we want to remove this activity class, then that also means we will remove all of its dependencies. And once we need them again, we have to recreate them. And the solution to this problem is called Dagger, because now we actually come to the injection part so whenever we now want to get those dependencies and we use Dagger, then the only thing we need to do is to add the add inject annotation. And that will tell Dagger that it should look in it to find this dependency that we want to inject here and simply provide it for our activity. So we don't have that boilerplate code inside of our activity. Instead, we will only have that code on a central place that Dagger manages for us. And whenever we need that object, then we simply need to add this annotation to get it. So as you can see, that code is much cleaner right now because we don't really need to create an instance of that room database and that repository inside of our activity. Instead, what is much smarter is to create those instances in our Dagger classes. So the only thing we need here is the view model factory to create our actual view model that we want to have in our activity. And since we already created that view model factory behind the scenes in our Dagger classes, we can simply inject this here and provide that instance for our view model and pass that to our view model provider. Another useful thing Dagger allows us to do is to scope our dependencies, which means that we can control the lifetime. So you probably heard about singletons in Kotlin, which are just objects that only one instance exists of, and they exist during the whole lifetime of our application. 
And Dagger now takes this concept of the lifetime of an object and lets us change this lifetime. So for example, if we have a login activity and we have objects that we only need inside of this login activity, then we can scope them with Dagger to tell them that we only need it in this activity. So the memory won't actually be taken away after the login process. However, scoping is everything but trivial. So that's the reason why I won't do this in my running app, because I also think that this running app is not really big enough to have a significant performance advantage due to scoping. So that's why I won't use it there. And I really want to um, keep it simple because I never made a tutorial about Dagger and many of you have never worked with it before. So it wouldn't be a good idea to use scoping here, especially because it's not a really big app. And as a last question I want to answer in this video is why do we actually use Dagger for this running app and not another dependency injection library like Coin, for example, because Coin is also very popular to use for dependency injection for Android and Kotlin. And it is much simpler than Dagger, but I still decided to use Dagger for this on the one hand, because I don't have much experience with Coin, And on the other hand, Coin is not real dependency injection. Instead, Coin is called a service provider, and that means it won't inject the dependencies at compile time like Dagger does it. Instead, it will inject them at runtime. So that's what makes Dagger more performant than Coin, for example. However, if you really feel comfortable with Coin and you really like using it, then there's absolutely no problem to use it in small to medium sized projects. However, I really got used to Dagger and I think you can get used to it too. And once you get used to it, it's really not a big deal and you will understand Dagger and you won't find it very difficult anymore. So that's why I will teach you Dagger here. And that's also the framework that, that is by Google and also recommended by Google. So please let me know in the comments if you like this video and if it helped you to understand dependency injection. And also if you have any questions, then really don't mind asking them below. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.